Greetings everyone, my name is Shivesh and I worked as a postdoc for the Cambioscope project. Today I'm going to present the status of research objective 1, which aims at establishing the residual biomass baseline for France. The title of the presentation is Developing a Spatially Explicit Environmental Threshold for National Bioeconomy Strategies. In the context of Cambioscope project, the residual biomass baseline encompasses three important questions. The first one is how much residual resources are currently available and where exactly? The second question is how are these residues being currently used in France? And finally, what are the environmental impacts of their current use? The aim of developing this residual biomass baseline is to provide an environmental performance threshold for the use of these residues and we do that by using LCA. The results from LCA in different impact categories represents our threshold, which should not be crossed for implementing a sustainable bioeconomy. So to develop the residual biomass baseline, we followed a four step framework. The first step of the framework was to develop a spatial database of the residual biomass streams for France. In the next step, we identified the current use of these residues by extensive literature surveys and by talking to experts in the field. The third step was to develop an emission inventory for the current use of these residues in France, basically developing the life cycle inventories. And finally, we performed the life cycle analysis for the current use of these residues to study their environmental impacts. The geographical scope of the study was metropolitan France and we selected eight major streams. Now I will talk about the step one of our framework where we developed the spatial database. As mentioned before, we selected eight major residual streams, which are primary forestry residues, crop residues, pruning residues, manure, green garden waste, seabed sludge, household waste, and agro-industrial residues. Primary forestry residues are defined as the residues that are left after logging operations and include branches, stumps, treetops, bark, and such. This slide contains information on data sources, time scale, spatial resolution, and the potential estimated. I will not go into much detail about these as the slides will be shared in the public domain and interested people can look at it. However, I will highlight some important aspects of our spatial database. Quantified data on primary forestry residues and agricultural residues are not directly available and they have to be estimated. We did that by using empirical functions and modeling tools. We also reported these estimates with uncertainty ranges. Our ambition was to map these resources at the highest possible resolution and for some streams we did that but for others we could not do that due to certain limitations. So to harmonize this we report our results at the French departmental or the European nursery level. For our spatial database we only report the theoretical potential which is the maximum overall amount of terrestrial biomass which can be considered theoretically available. The other potentials can be evaluated from the theoretical potential directly by using some scalar multipliers. Before I go into the results of our spatial database, I will highlight some challenges that we face during the estimation of forestry residues and how we address them. When we were doing our literature survey on methods for estimating primary forestry residues, we found large gaps such as methods relying on old data from literature rather than using modern remote sensing observations. So we decided to build upon the landmark Biomass Energy Europe Handbook Methods for Resource Assessment and we developed the CAMB framework. The CAMB framework can be used with remote sensing products and includes uncertainty quantification at, at each step of the calculation process. While developing the CAMB framework, we also developed a metric for deciding the spatial resolution for such assessments based on file size and the processing time. The figure on the left shows the generic structure of the framework where we combine the inputs from satellite observations and the data from forestry statistics to ultimately get results with uncertainties. In the figure on the right, you can observe that there is a sharp increase in both the file size and the processing time after a 10 meter resolution. This helped us to choose the mapping resolution. More details can be found in the paper. From this framework gave us the first ever high resolution country scale map for forestry residues with uncertainty quantified as maps as well. In terms of gross volume, the primary forestry residues in France varied from about 4.4 million ton dry matter per year to about 13.9 million ton dry matter per year. For crop residues, we faced a different type of challenge. 
we found that there were several studies reporting different functions for quantifying these resources and we wanted to understand which one we should use or if there was any difference between them. So we performed three statistical tests with 19 years of data on crop production for 96 French departments and we formulated three specific questions. The first one was how variations in the primary crop yield affect the estimation of residue yield. The second was how uncertainties in the primary crop yield overshadow the differences observed in the estimated crop residues. And finally, was there any significant difference in the results estimated from using diff these different estimation functions? In the figure in the left, you can see that the different estimation functions behave differently to the sensitivities in yield, which we varied by plus minus 10% for the figure in orange and plus minus 50% for the figures in yellow. In the figure in the right, it can be observed that some functions are overlapping in their confidence interval zones. The figure on the top left shows the box plot which represent the variability of estimated results using different functions. It can be noticed among others that no two boxes overlap with each other, highlighting that the functions were statistically different at 95% confidence interval. What this meant in terms of quantified results can be seen in the maps where you can observe that about 29 French departments were associated with different ranges of wheat straw potential. Thus, we decided to consider the overall theoretical potential as the median of the range which varied from about 987 petajoule per year to about 1369 petajoule per year. Finally, this slide shows the maps for the availability of different residual streams at the French departmental or the European nut tree level. Crop residues held the largest share of these potential with about 1178 petajoule per year, followed by manure at about 443 petajoule per year, and primary forestry residues at about 158 petajoule per year. We want to acknowledge uh, some institutions that helped us with the data, particularly the Institute Paris Region for uh, Household Biowaste, or DECO, from uh, uh, the Occitanie region, and other regional waste observatories. In this slide, you can see the potential from all the streams combined. The potential at the French departmental level varied from about 0.6 petajoule per year to about 63.4 petajoule per year. And at the regional level, the potential varied from about 4.8 petajoule per year to about 276 petajoule per year. The pie charts represent the share of different residual streams for each region. From the figure, you can observe that the Grand Est region in the far east of France had a larger share of crop residues, whereas the Britain region in the far west of France had a larger share of manure. This is because a large number of animal farms are located in Brittany. The overall theoretical potential from all residues combined was observed to be about 2100 petajoule per year. The table in this slide shows the region-wise distribution of the theoretical potential of different residual streams in France, and the graphic shows the percentage share of the selected biomass in French residual biomass mix. Crop residues represent the maximum share with 56% of the overall share, followed by manure at 21% and primary forestry residues at 8%. So in summary, the overall theoretical potential from the selected residual biomass in France was observed to be 2100 petajoule per year and uh, three streams Crop residues, manure, and primary forestry residues represented about 85% of the overall potential. And this overall theoretical potential corresponds to about 20% of the total primary energy supply for France for the year 2018. But it is important to consider that the potentials shown in this study are theoretical and the actual availability can be low. In addition to all these results, we also developed a replicable framework can be for high resolution spatial quantification of primary forestry residues. Now I will talk about the second step of our framework, which deals with the current use of French residual biomasses. The table in this slide shows the current use of the selected residual biomass streams with their percentage share and the quantity. And the, in the comment section, we mention the sources of 
these data. About 56% of the primary forestry residues are burnt in France and the remaining are left to decay. However, after talking to some French forest experts, they say that the portion of burning might be significantly lower. For crop residues, about 68% is used as animal bedding, 28% is plowed down and incorporated back in the soil, and the remaining is burnt in the field. We consulted an expert on French agriculture and his opinion was same, except that, that he expressed that there is likely no more burning of crop residues in France. Uh, the data on current use of pruning residues in France is not well documented and what we could find in the literature was that most of these residues are used at the farm itself. However, two European projects on pruning residues reported that the main management of these residues is open air burning and its disposal and eventual abandonment. Thus, for pruning residues, we considered that 30% of these residues were used as mulch as a form of disposal followed by equal partitioning for open air burning and land decay at 25%. In this slide, you can visualize the current use of residual resources in France. Overall, 38% of these residues are used as animal bedding, followed by land application at 19% and open air burning at 11.6%. Now I will talk about the third and the fourth step of our framework, which deals with the environmental implications of the current use of these resources. Here I will give an example of the environmental impacts of the current use of two major residual streams in France, crop residues and prim primary forestry residues. Uh, together these streams represent about 64% of the overall theoretical potential. The figures on the right show the process flow diagrams for the current use of these streams. Out of one ton of primary forestry residue, 560 kg is burnt and 430 kg is left to be decayed on land based on the current use data. For one ton of crop residues, 680 kg is used as animal bedding, 200 kg is plowed and incorporated back in the soil, and the remaining is burnt. This slide shows an example of the LCA results for climate change category for the use of primary forestry residues and crop residues in France. The flows towards the end represents the emissions from different greenhouse gases in CO2 equivalents. It can be seen that open air burning of crop residues and forestry residues form the largest emitters of greenhouse gases with the emission almost equal to about 12,000 kiloton of carbon dioxide biogenic followed by fossil carbon dioxide, which mainly comes from the background processes like transportation and plowing of straw. Now I will give a brief about the public database that we are developing for the research objective one of the Cambioscope project. The future vision of the Cambioscope project is to create an interactive online uh, public database for the French residual biomasses. I will present the database that I've been working uh, on so in this slide you can see the generic structure so first you select the stream uh, then the geographical scope as regions or departments and then you can select the current use for all streams or go individually stream by stream and finally when you click on get results you can see the residual resources as maps or excel sheets you can visualize the resource flows and see the environmental impacts among other things Finally, we have some questions for the experts. So our question to the experts are, can you provide us with some deeper insights on the current use of pruning residues or point us to a better source for the current use of pruning residues in France? Currently, crop residues in France are used as animal bedding, plod and incorporated back in the soil and open air burning. Can you challenge us with these values? As uh, the French expert on the subject expressed that there is likely no more burning of crop residues, but we could not find any documented literature on that. Finally, thank you so much for your attention.